Well, Big 12 champions got a nice ring to it. And uh, what, a, what a great football game. Two great teams. Uh, TCU should be in the, in the CFP. They're, they're one of the best four teams. Uh, and uh, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I thought we could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and found a way to win. Uh, it was an exceptional football game. A lot of ups and downs um, between both teams and great resolve by our guys. And, uh, you know, the overtime stop, I, I, it's incredible. You get a third and one and a fourth and one, uh, as good as they are up front and good run game as they have. And, and our defensive line stood up and, and, and stuffed them back-to-back -back plays. And then I thought it was important for us to get a first down and, and not make it a 40-some yard field goal, but get it a little bit closer. And we were able to do that and then uh, executed to perfection our what we call a Wisconsin of getting the ball to the middle of the field for Ty. And then uh, I would say over the last five to six weeks, there may not be a more valuable kid on the football team than Ty Zentner. And Ty was huge again today. And what was just so poetic for me was the ball was on his foot in the last game. Uh, in Big 12 play for him. And uh, there was no doubt in my mind he was making that, no doubt in my mind. So credit to our seniors, credit to our leaders, credit to the culture that they've created, credit to player ownership, uh, the power of belief, all those things, because you know we've had a lot of, a lot of tough times. Um, you know, a lot of people doubted that team after we lost to Tulane and said, must not be very good. And they took it, they took it to heart. And uh, we lost to a good TCU team, lost to a really good TCU team uh, and ended up getting a win. And then we lost to a good Texas team. And we had to go 3-0, and get some help, got some help. And those kids get, went 3-0 and in tough circumstances at Baylor, at West Virginia, home on senior day against KU to have an opportunity to come here. And we talked about it in the locker room. And you can ask Daniel Green about this. We talked about it in the locker room after we beat KU. We weren't coming here for a participation trophy. We were coming here to win the thing. And that was our mindset all week. Uh, and we found a way with a great resolve by a bunch of great seniors. Coach, Cole Carmody, GoPowerCat.com. Um, you had a lot of young guys out there today on defense. What does that say about not only them, but just the culture that you talked about a little bit earlier? Well, um, you know, you got to rise up. When your opportunity comes, you got to rise up. And, and I look at Jacob Paris that uh, didn't practice most of the week and uh, found a way to gut it out and play. I look at Keenan Garber that was a wide receiver the entire year and came to me five weeks ago and said, I'd like to be a defensive back. I want to help the team. And so he was on scout team up until Thursday of this week. On Thursday, we moved him from scout team and said, you've got to be the emergency guy in case Jacob Parrish can't go. And uh, that's the sign of a culture. That's the sign of not wanting to let guys like Daniel Green and Eli Huggins down. And I thought Keenan Garber played his tail off. And uh, uh, VJ Payne is a true freshman playing. And Jacob Parrish is a true freshman playing to go with some of those veterans like Josh and, and Drake and Julius and uh, um, phenomenal resolve by those guys. Coach, I, I know we're in the moment here, and uh, but is there any way to put kind of the enormity of this in perspective? This is a program that's, you've won the fourth conference championship in yeah. program history. Um, yeah, I'll let that sink in at some point. Um, you know, I, we, I, I'm fortunate to be here. Uh, Gene Taylor took a chance on an FCS coach. Uh, when not a lot of people would, but he believed in, in me and us. Um, and then coming here, you know, I look at these guys that believed in us as a coaching staff when there was a coaching change and um, stuck with us. And, you know, the last couple of years, starting in January of 2021, these guys will tell you our locker room became so close and so tight. And, and I'm telling you, this is about the power of belief and the power of player ownership. And, uh, when you have those two things, I don't think anything can stop you. Coach, you guys ran out there uh, when you needed at the end there. Damian Alalio, redshirt freshman from Manhattan, Kansas. Can you just say what it, what it means to see him do that? He doesn't get a ton of snaps, but when, he, when you needed him on the biggest play of the game, he yeah. got it. Um, you know, everybody is counted on in those times. And, and Damian uh, came in and did his job, uh, as well as everybody else up front and the linebackers. And, 
you know, this was a pure team win. I mean, offense, defense, special teams, uh, guys that you expect to make big time plays like these two guys to guys that uh, uh, maybe are a little bit under the radar. Uh, but that's what championship teams do. And championship teams have resolve and we and they count on each other uh, when when it's crunch time. And Chris, this was a game of momentum swings. Seemed like every time one team tried to pull away, couldn't happen, ends up in yeah. overtime. How did you manage that part of the things? You know, just uh, stay in the fight. We talk about it all the time that you're going to have adversity and you got to stay in the fight. And we talked uh, even this morning that uh, field goals aren't going to beat you. And I thought the defense did a phenomenal job a couple times um, on them moving the ball and holding them to field goals. And then we were able to hit a few explosive plays. And, um, you know, just I can't say enough about uh, about these guys and the leadership uh, of this crew because, you know, once we got it to overtime um, and went on defense first, we knew we were going to get a stop. And I'm telling you, if we didn't get a stop, we were going to score a touchdown and go for two. We were going to end this thing. And Will knew it and uh, offense knew it. But uh, once we got that stop, uh, we were just going to position ourselves and, and let Ty win the game. You knew that this TCU team would come back. They've done that in yeah. most of our games this year. Watching that last uh, drive where Duggan breaks off a couple runs, ties it up, kind of what's going through your, through your mind there as you're going potentially to overtime. Well, to try to get our offense ready to go, to try to get a field goal, and we were close. We had a, we had a good drive. Uh, Will threw a strike to, to Deuce on a slant route on a third down that got us past midfield. And uh, then they did a nice job of, of stopping us. But we were trying to win that thing in regulation uh, and, and weren't able to do it. And then, you know, once again, Ty pins them down inside the 10 so they can't mount a drive so that they could win it in regulation. And uh, um, I, I, I want to say from on behalf of all of the three of us up here, uh, K-State Nation came today. That, that crowd was electric. And uh, it was an unbelievable atmosphere. And, and when we were on, on defense, that crowd was phenomenal. And can't thank uh, our fan base enough for coming down here in droves and, and cheering on these guys because uh, we were playing for them as much as we're for each other. Brennan Lewis of Levita News here in Fort Worth, Texas. I remember Coach Kleiman um, talking to you this summer at Big 12 Media Days when you stated about Will Howard, um, you know, intending to stay at K-State and not transferring. How do you think he have taken it um, as Adrian Martinez have gotten injured and he's now the starting quarterback? Um, these guys will tell you, everybody in that locker room has so much confidence in Will Howard. And Will Howard's a flat winner. And he's a competitor. He wanted to play. Uh, but I, I credit both Adrian and Will for how this has gone this year as far as both kids helped us win a Big 12 championship for sure. And both kids rallied around each other when the other one wasn't playing. And that's a culture. That's a sign of a group of guys that love each other. And when it ended up being Will's job when Adrian got hurt, Adrian was his biggest fan and helped him a bunch. And uh, you know, Will Howard deserves everything he got today. And um, these guys will tell you, um, the kid works his tail off uh, and uh, is a great, great leader for a young player. Coach Kleiman, you mentioned at the start of this uh, the, the losses that this team had to kind of respond to. How did you see this group of guys go back to work after Tulane, after the first TCU game, after Texas? Uh, just the fact that they were, they were more upset about it, that they let, let an opportunity slip, whatever it may be. Now, we lost to a Tulane team that might be a New Year's Six Bowl team, too. So maybe they were actually a pretty good football team. Um, but you just you, you can't trip on something that's behind you. you got to focus on the next game. And I thought we played a phenomenal game the next week against an Oklahoma team that I think was ranked fifth in the country uh, and fought after that. And, and that's the thing we kept talking about, our guys, is don't have an edge just after a loss. Have an edge after a win. And these last four weeks, I think our preparation in the final 48 hours prior to us finishing practice on a Thursday to teeing it up on Saturday has been as good as anything I've ever been involved with of guys owning it, locking into the final details, and playing with unbelievable focus uh, and unbelievable you know, resolve for each other. And uh, th these last four weeks, our guys have been so locked in and razor sharp. 
Tim Eberson, Manhattan Mercury coach. Uh, Julius battled with, with, with Quentin Johnston throughout the whole game. Yep. How how big was was that pick? That it, it was huge, and uh, Quentin Johnson's a, a great football player. I mean, he's a first round draft pick, and we gave Julius a tough task. Uh, and you, you you know our defense. There's a lot of one on one situations, and and you're going to lose some. That's that's part of being a defensive back. You're going to lose some of those situations, but you you got to make sure and stay in the fight. And you know we called a, a great blitz. Uh, on, a, on a third and goal from the eight, and Julius got flipped on it and makes a huge, huge pick to keep him out of the end zone. But that, that's Julius. I, we, Julius wants to be on that stage, and, and that's why he's the player he is.